brings you to Vaughn Castle. A plan, my lord. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Night Owl channel. Welcome back to the series where we counted down the top Dynasty Warriors characters as of the latest game. Coming in at number 10, starting off the top 10 of the most popular characters in the Dynasty Warriors series based on the three polls that originated with this series from a few years ago, we have Zhu Shu. So Zhu Shu comes in at number 10. He is a disciple of Sima Hui and an expert swordsman in his younger days. Avenging his friend with his blade, he gave up swordsmanship and decided to study after his arrest. He is friends with Zhu Ge Liang and he was known to have been a dutiful son and cared deeply for his mother. In both history and in fiction, it is because of Zhu Shu's devotion that he chooses to leave Liu Bei for Cao Cao as the latter held the aforementioned mother hostage. Before we jump into how Zhu Shu has changed from Dynasty Warriors 8 to Dynasty Warriors 9, let's take a look at the popularity polls to see why Zhu Shu starts off the top 10 Dynasty Warriors characters at number 10. In the first popularity poll consisting of about 75,000 total votes, we have Zhu Shu coming in the number 19 spot with 1,343 of those votes. In the second popularity poll, this is probably why he's up so high, Zhu Shu breaks the top five and rings in at number four. And then in my personal ranking, Zhu Shu's gonna drop down to the 26th position. So for me personally, he's lower among the list because Zhu Shu is a character that I enjoy because of his weapon style. His weapon style is one of the most fun styles in the game. However, I don't particularly like his personality. His look is okay. And you know, as we go through the character's changes, we'll talk more about it. But for me, the main draw for the character is the weapon style. But where the character falls flat for me is definitely in his personality. And for me, that's why he was a little lower. The only reason he's up so high is because of his weapon style. His weapon style is actually a style that I've used in my credit characters within the Dynasty Warriors empire series and i've always enjoyed that style the sword and hook style with jushu is one of the most fun styles that i've ever played with in this series but before we jump into how he's changed from dynasty wars 8 to dynasty wars 9 not a lot of changes because he's only been in two main series games let's talk a little bit more about jushu for people who don't know so jushu was an official of the state of sao Wei during the three kingdoms period of china he used to be a vigilante swordsman in his early life however after running into trouble with the authorities he renounced his old ways and took up scholarly pursuits he lived a reclusive life from the 190s to mid 200s where he met and befriended Zhuge Liang. He then became an advisor to the warlord Liu Bei and served under Liu Bei for about a year and he also recommended Zhuge Liang to Liu Bei during this period of time. After Liu Bei was defeated at the Battle of Changban by his rival Cao Cao, Zhu Shu's mother was captured by Cao Cao's forces during the battle and feeling lost and without a sense of direction, Zhu Shu eventually left Liu Bei and joined Cao Cao. He continued serving in the state of Cao Wei and died of illness in office. So Zushu was a very interesting character within the series, and he was definitely a weird character. At least his story I've always found strange. Despite him being a very intelligent person, Zushu was a very humble man in Liu Bei's service, but he had no ambition, no self-confidence, and he thinks he fails his purpose, especially when compared to Zhuge Liang. So this is what I was talking about in terms of his personality within the games because Zhushu is just this like, he's got this learned helplessness behavior that he displays within the games. And even when he has the prominence and the intelligence to be able to provide good and clear suggestions to Liu Bei as a strategist, he doesn't deem himself worthy to be a strategist. Even though within the games, he originally comes up to Liu Bei to offer him help within the battle against Cao Ren. At the end of it, after they succeeded, he still is like hesitant to help him out. You know, the mother situation with her being a captive of Cao Cao. But within the games, he has this like really self-defeating, you know, self-deprecating personality. And he doesn't really deem himself worthy at all. It's just... It's a character that I can never really get behind. His personality is something that's never really drawn me to one. It's so sad. It's so depressing. It's just something you don't really want to be around. This character seems like the character that's always down, always downhearted, and, you know, nobody can do anything to cheer him up. And even when he goes back to Cao Cao's side, you know, check on his mother and make sure she's okay, apparently, at least within the novel, his mom was so 
disappointed in Jushu that she ended up committing suicide. I don't know if that's true in history, but they have it within the novel. It's quite the twist of events for Jushu. I kind of feel bad for him. And then after that point when, you know, that happens, Jushu just decides to stay in there. He just stays in his state of learned helplessness and he decides that he's just not going to give advice to Sao Sao, which didn't really matter because Sao Sao went up and acquired a bunch of other really great strategies anyway. He's a very strange character and his story is really, really weird. This character is just, he's just very weird, you know, it's just a very weird character. I do like in the hypothetical when, you know, Jushu actually becomes, you know, he stays part of the Shu kingdom and you can see him growing in confidence and assertiveness, being the person that he should be as a character. But historically, following the historical routes within both the games, Jushu is just a very sad, pathetic man. And he just sits there and admits it. He's just like, I'm a weak man. I can do nothing for you. I'm leaving. Like, it's just crazy. I feel kind of bad for him, but then I don't because he's so self-aware of his weakness and how bad he is and all this other stuff that he could potentially, with a you know, shift in mindset, could become potentially a better character and you see glimpses of that in the hypothetical in Dynasty Warriors 8 which was really cool to see but I guess with that being said we're gonna go ahead and jump into how Jushu has changed he doesn't have a lot of changes and his content is very very small he does not have a lot of content revolved around him I'm gonna start off with his appearance I think in both games he looks relatively the same I don't really have anything to complain about his appearance it's very good for Jushu I mean for who he is his appearance it definitely fits the archetype like his facial features and the way he looks definitely fits the archetype of the you know sad self-pitying character but yeah I mean, I don't really complain anything about his appearance. I think it's just fine. Now, moving on to his voice acting, we're going to cover his voice acting real quick. And the voice acting was just fine for him as well. It was good in Dynasty Warriors 8. Oh, my name is Shu Shu. I'm just passing by. And it was decent in Dynasty Warriors 9. I can only wish that I had been allowed to be a strategist for Shu and aided in this endeavor. But in Dynasty Warriors 9, I mean, his story was so short. He really doesn't have that much time to really showcase his personality or, you know, the voice acting really at all. But both of them were just okay. They were just fine for him. Can't really complain about that at all. Now, moving on to the best part of the character, we have his weapon style. So this is hands down the best part of the character. And this is why I'm assuming he's in the top 10. Honestly, I don't think this character deserves to be in the top 10. But according to the numbers, according to... You know, the averages, this is where he ended up. But hands down, this is the best part of the character, which is his weapon style. So within the first game, he gets the sword and hook. And this weapon style is so fun to play as. I'm assuming this is why he did so well. This is why he did so, you know, quote unquote, well for me, because his weapon style is just so addicting to play as. I love the grappling element with this style. You fly up in the air, you grapple yourself back down, you can do your next combo right after that. Super fun play style, and I don't see many people hating on the character for his weapon style. It was a very, very good weapon style. In Dice Wars 9, they just give him a regular sword. The sword style was okay for him. It fit him. His historical background said he was really good at swordsmanship, so it, you know, it fits the character. The DLC gives him his sword and hook, which was also really fun as well. But the sword and hook, hands down, one of the best styles within the game, probably a top 10 favorite style for me. I love the Musao attack for the sword and hook. It's one of my favorites in the game, and I would equip it to my, you know, critic characters and the Empire's games, and you know, the sword and hook was just a really fun playstyle. But yeah, I can't really say any more good things about the weapon style. It's just unfortunate that I got equipped to Jushu because, you know, his personality is just not good. Like I've already mentioned, it's just polar opposite of how good he is with that weapon. But yeah, I can't complain about the weapon style too much. Can't say enough good things about it. Very, very good weapon style. One of my favorites within the game. Now moving on to the significant battles, his relationships, and his deaths. It's going to be pretty quick because he doesn't have a lot of information and he doesn't have a lot of significance within the game. Starting off with his significant battles, the only one I can really say is, is the battle of Jin Ye. And this is the battle of him pretty much proving his prowess as a strategist and breaking Sao Ren's eight gates formation. So he played a very significant role in this battle. He displayed his prowess as a strategist. You know, he goes up to Guan Yu and Zhang Fei originally and... You know, Liu Bei obviously is there as well, and he's like, hey, I can help you guys get through this. Let me know what I can do. And of course, everybody's skeptical because this Ram dude just comes out of nowhere and is like, hey, I can help you. But he ends up helping them. He gets through the eight gates pretty flawlessly. And at the end of the stage, now he goes back to the learned helplessness like I already mentioned, and he's already passing himself off to being replaced by Zhuge Liang. But yeah, that's probably his most significant battle. And then after that, his story's pretty much end. In Dynasty Warriors 9, I've said this in a couple other videos. 
I don't think anyone's going to beat this guy. This is the shortest story. He has one battle. He has one stage, one battle. He has two events. He talks to Liu Bei, Guan Yu, and Zhang Fei twice, and that's it. That is all the content he has in Dynasty Warriors 9. Very, very short. Now, moving on to his relationships within the game, and, you know, he only has, like, I would say two main relationships. He's only got Liu Bei and Zhu Ge Liang. Those are the only two relationships this guy has, and it's pretty obvious why. He wants to help Liu Bei. He sees this benevolence, virtue, this passion that he really agree with, and he wants to help this guy as much as he can. And I can understand that. Zhu Xu, again, being this dutiful, devoted son to his mom, he's got similar qualities to that of the Shu kingdom, so it's obvious to see why he really likes Liu Bei. The obvious relationship there, it's, very, it's a very limited relationship because you know, he doesn't really get an opportunity to really be a part of the Shu Kingdom, but it is there. Liu Bei definitely is grateful for his help during that battle and getting them through that and wishes him the best with his decision and everything. That's probably going to be his most significant relationship because he's the one that wants to help him the most. And he's even the one to suggest Zhu Ge Liang to him, jumping right into his relationship with Zhu Ge Liang. These two were friends. They both knew of each other before they joined Shu and everything. And uh, Zhu Xu was a good friend of Zhu Ge Liang and he was also kind of like, what's the word, intimidated by him. He was, you know, oh, this is someone I'll never beat. I'll never be like him, you know. Know, that insecurity that he has that comes out. I'm sure he respects Zhuge Liang. I'm sure he looks up to him. And of course, he wants to be like him. But because of his personality, he's just this self-defeating, oh, it's never going to happen. And I'm not even going to try. Like, he doesn't even bother to try because he's just like, it's impossible. Can't really agree with that with the character, but everybody's different. And again, it's always cool to see the diversity within the cast. I mean, yeah, that's, you know, Zhu Xu was given that personality within the game. And, I mean, what can you do? This is all I can do. All I can do is analyze him. That's the only thing I can do here. And then finally, his death. It's very, very short. Like I've already mentioned in the beginning, his death he died of illness in office and that was it it could have been because of you know grief it could have been because of the way the novel portrays his mom committing suicide i mean that's pretty rough man you come back for your mom and then she commits suicide because she was disappointed in you like damn i feel bad for the character in that sense but i don't feel bad in the terms of like oh now i'm gonna stay here and just not give you advice which was you know what they alluded to with his ending in dynasty warriors 9 but uh yeah that's pretty much all I have for Zhu Xu here. He's got not that much content to really go off of, and his story's really short. I like it when they, you know, go the hypothetical way with him, and you can see him develop into something more prominent, and, you know, get in that self-confidence that, you know, he should technically have. But that's pretty much all I have for the character. Weapon style was one of the best in the game. This is why this character is so high. If he didn't have this weapon, if his weapon style wasn't that good, he would not be this high. There is no way Zhu Xu would be top 10 if he did not have the sword and hook style. But he does have it. It's one of the best Musao attacks I've seen within the game. And that's pretty much all I have for Zhu Xu here, guys. Let me know what you guys think about him down below. And that's pretty much all I have. He's number 10 on our list. Let me know what you guys think about that. If you guys enjoyed it, definitely appreciate it. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. <laughs>